Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about an auto increment switch. Auto decrement as well. If you haven't watched the video on round robin switch, you should look at that first because this is based on that idea. Here is the overall issue. We have a button, right? Here's the button. And this is going to increment some variable. User comes by, presses the button. Every time they press it, a value increments. Now with the round robin switch, we looked at a case where this thing ran through a series of, of uh, values. In our case, we looked at like a heat pump that might have four different uh, functions, heat, cool, dehumidify, fan. So you press, 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 and it cycles through these. Well, what if you have something that has a very large number of, of possible states, right? Like you could have a volume control and that might go from, you know, zero to a hundred. You might have uh, a thermostat that might go from, you know, if you're doing Fahrenheit, maybe like 55 to 85. Uh, you know, if you were doing it in um, centigrade, it might be 15 to 30, whatever. But it's more than just, you know, three, four or five things. And, you know, your average person doesn't want to have to sit here. If they're going to do a volume control and go like this. It's crazy, right? I mean, just think of a, uh, a remote control for your TV. Right? You want to press the button and as you hold it, you want it to automatically increment. And here's an important thing to remember. You want it to increment fast enough automatically that it would be quicker than if you did do this, right? Because nobody wants to press this and have it go one, two, three, four. No, the user is going to wind up swearing at the designer of this thing, right? It's, it's frustrating. You want it to be faster. On the other hand, you don't want it to be so that, you know, when you press it sort of purposefully, you don't automatically get, uh, you know, sort of an, an extra increment. So maybe we would like something where um, when you press it, you get, you know, let's say 10 or 15 increments per second, but it actually takes more than, you know, 50 or 75 or 100 milliseconds on the initial press to actually put it into that mode, sort of a hold off. All right. So that's what we're going to look at today, how, how, how we do that. Now, we're going to look at this in a non-interrupt based bit of code. I'm only going to look at the increment part of it. Um, the decrement part would be very similar. I'm also going to assume that we have a debound switch and we're going to look at this on a uh, low to high transition. Holding is going to produce a high. All right. So debound switch, so I don't have to worry about any jaggy bits. We're going to look at a low to high transition. That's our basic increment, like we did with the round robin switch. And then held, we hold the switch, that's going to produce a high as well. Okay, so um, for our purposes, I'm going to def define a couple of values. Right. So let's just say that we have a max value. I don't really care what this thing is for, but let's just say we have a, um, a maximum value of a hundred and maybe a minimum value of 40. Now, just like we had with the round robin switch, I'm going to need a global variable to hold this. And if we're only doing 40 to 100, we could stick that into a character. So I'll just make an unsigned character here, and I'm just going to call it um, G value. And I will initialize it at min value. Now, you could have some other default. That's just what I'm going to do. Now, I'm going to need a, a couple of more uh, variables over here, um, just like we had 
again with the with the uh, round robin switch i'm going to need to keep track of the prior button state so again i'm going to use an unsigned character and i'm going to call that g prior button and we'll initially say that that's off now i'm also going to need a couple of characters uh, excuse me not characters a couple of variables to hold the times because we're going to have to keep track of time on this thing so those are going to be longs unsigned longs after all there's this timing for the auto increment and so forth so i'm going to have an unsigned long i'm going to call that start time and i need to keep track of what the that increment time is how often do i you know increment the value i'm going to call that repeat milliseconds msec for short all right now what are those values let's define a couple things so as i said uh the increment might be 10 times per second so maybe 100 milliseconds so this is my auto increment msec milliseconds 100 but i also want this idea of sort of a an extended time sort of a hold off on the initial press right i don't want that to go off and you know immediately so i'm going to just going to go that the hold off that's a hold off milliseconds and you know you can play around with these numbers i'm just going to throw in 500 milliseconds here so that you know when you try this it'll be obvious right but you might want to shorten that down or you might want to speed this um, auto increment all depends all right okay so let's go look at some code that would be sitting inside the loop function right the main thing that's you know coursing over and over and over again so i'm going to need um, a couple of variables I'm going to need an unsigned character to get my button state. And I'm going to write this sort of generically. We're going to refer to some port. I'm going to call it port X. But, you know, it could be port B, port D, you know, whatever you're using. And there'll be an associated bit with that, which I'm just going to call mask. But again, you're right up your own. I'm also going to need along with the button state i'm also going to need uh, the time at which the button was pressed so that's going to be an unsigned long and i'll give that the very inventive name of button time All right so those are again defined inside my loop so the very first thing that we're going to do here is determine what is the state of the button so button is just going to be that port of interest handed with the appropriate mask. So this is either going to be uh, a high or a low. Right? As we said, held is high, right? Low to high transition. It's the high that we're looking for. So we do that anding. Button's either going to come back as a zero or non-zero, right? If it's being held, it's going to come up as a non-zero value, an exists value. Now, when that's done, I also want to grab the time this was pressed. When did the user press the button? So in Arduino world, we have a millis functions to do, to do that. So I'm going to grab button time, right? Button time is just millis so remember that's the number of milliseconds that have elapsed since the uh, system was booted up since it started up okay 
I only care about when this thing um, is is uh, pressed. So we just do an if button. So in other words, if I have a non-zero value, All right? So in other words, this means the button is pressed. Well, there's two things we have to worry about here, which would be, um, is this the initial press or is this a hold, All right? Okay, so um, how do we know it's, it's held? How do I know it's the initial? Right? The initial is the first thing we're gonna have to look for, right? I know that it's um, the initial case if the difference between uh, button and prior button is a, uh, a one from zero. In other words, if I, would, if I were to say, matter of fact, I'm gonna change color for this. If button, right, the current value, if this is greater than prior button, because remember, prior button, if it wasn't held, is a zero, right? That's what we initialized it to. So I'm going to get some value out of here, right, if it's held, all depending on the bit. So whatever it is, bit, bit zero, bit one, bit two, it's going to be bigger than prior button. Right, if that is the case, then we know that this is the initial edge, right? This is the transition. Now, alternately, because you've checked to see that it's pressed separately, you could just say if not prior button. In other words, if the if the prior button isn't a value, in other words, if it was a zero before. Okay, that's another way you could say it, but whatever. So this, at this point, we know we have a transition. What do we do? Well, we need to increment, right? Because you press the button. So I'm just going to create a function over here called increment. Now, we can kind of play around with this a little bit. There's some different things we can do here. Um, probably the simplest thing you can do is to... Do something like this. Uh, let's see. Let's put a little. Um, so I'm just going to come over here and sort of write up my little increment function. This would be the simplest thing you could do. All this does is just bumps the, the global value that we have, gval. So we just say, okay, G value plus plus. And then we just have to make sure that it doesn't go too high, right? We have to cap it. So if G val is greater than max val, right? In this case, 100, then reset it. So it sort of, you know, hits the ceiling. That's your function. Now there are some modifications you can do here that are a little nicer. So for example, um, alternately you could have something where instead of passing no variable, you could pass in um, an integer value. Right, so in other words, your increment could look like, I'll just call it uh, i. And then instead of just doing an increment, you would say, you know, g value plus i. This has a couple of advantages. You could pass in a negative value to get a decrement. Of course, you would have to put in um, a lower bound. In other words, if G value is less than the min value, G value gets min value, right? You'd have to put that in as well. Um, the other thing that this would do for you is that it's possible to create sort of a high gear. In other words, if you hold it for, you know, a couple of seconds, you're getting this, you know, maybe, maybe 10 iterations per second. But if you hold it for, you know, a couple of seconds, maybe it jumps up to, you know, 
20 or 50 or 100 iter uh, uh, auto increments per second. All right, so it kind of goes, you know, once, once, hold, tick, 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 you hold it enough, tick, 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 you know, so you can get this like super high speed, which would be great if you had a, a really large range of things that you had to um, adjust across, okay? All right, um, so whichever way you want to do it, I'm just going to leave it in this very simple way, All right? So you understand what's possible here. In any case, um, so we increment it, and then what I need to do is record the, uh, the start time. In other words, when the person hit the button. So we would say that G start time gets button time. In other words, the thing we recorded up here. The other thing we're going to do is record um, or set, I should say, the repeat milliseconds variable. So this is a, an initial transition. So this has to be the holdoff value. So we're going to set G repeat milliseconds to holdoff milliseconds. Okay, beautiful. All right, else. Well, what is it? It's not the transition. This is just held only. This is so colorful. All right, so what's happening in here? I just need to determine if it's held long enough. So here's what we do. If the button time, now remember, we're getting button time every time we come through loop, right? We're, re we're recording that right here. So on a subsequent pass through here, we look at button time. And what we do is we subtract off the start time that we recorded on the initial transition. Okay, so here's our start time. So subtract that off. And what you have left is the differential, the elapsed time. And then the question is, is that at least as big as the repeat milliseconds? Now don't check to see if it's equal because there's no guarantee that this is going to come out, you know, to be smack dab right on. It might just jump over it. So do a greater than or equal. If that's the case, then we've reached this um, auto increment stage. In which case, what we do is increment. And then, because we've reached this limit, we have to reset the start time for the next time through. So G start time is going to equal the button time that we picked up over here. And because we're now in this held version, we're no longer in the initial thing, right, the initial transition, um, we need to sort of bump up from hold off to auto, right, the higher speed version. So G repeat milliseconds turns into auto milliseconds. Okay. To match all the colors here. You have to be just perfect. All right, finally, bring this guy down. All right, so this is the end of our, notice the way the colors work just so nicely here. Obviously, the last thing we have to do when we get out of here is um, look at that prior button. Don't forget the prior button thing.
that gets the current value of button. All right, so let's review what's happening here. Uh, user is you know, just sitting there, nothing's going on. They press the button, right? Bleh. What happens? Okay, so we get um, some non-zero value here, record the time, button is pressed. Now, prior button was zero, so this is true. We have a transition, we increment, record the start time is the current time, we just press the button and set the hold off uh, as the repeat. Okay, now, rest of this, forget about it. G prior button gets button, so this is now the same value, right? So this is now a high, this is a non-zero value now. All right, sometime later, because you know down here is the rest of our code, you know, whatever else we need to do in the loop function, obviously we're going to, at, at some point, um, interrogate g value, do something with it. But eventually we're going to loop back around, come in, check the button again. Now that might be a millisecond later, right? Um, it is pressed, so we do come in here. However, because we reset prior button, this is no longer true. The red part's not true. We come down into here and we say, okay, what's the current button time? Subtract the start, the start value that we got from back here. If it's not bigger than this, don't do anything. Just reset start the uh, the uh, prior button, right? So again, that's going to be high. The person keeps holding. Well, maybe they only hold it for 300 milliseconds. They take their finger off. Okay, so it comes around. Um, this is no longer true. Button's no longer true, so none of this happens. Prior button gets set to button, so it goes back to zero. We're back to where we were initially. And guess what's going to happen? Well, Eventually, they're going to hit the button again. This goes high. We do all this, right? Eventually, if they keep holding, this will be true, and it'll be long enough. In other words, after several iterations through this thing, where, you know, maybe it's a 2 millisecond difference, a 5 millisecond difference, a 27 millisecond, and eventually, we're going to get up to this point where we've exceeded the repeat milliseconds. So, we'll increment it reset the start time to when I just hit the button. And now we drop the repeat milliseconds to 100 in this case, instead of the initial 500. So now they're, they're going to continue holding. So now it comes back around again. Button is uh, still non-zero. It's still true, but it's not the transition. We come back into the purple here. And uh, because we've reset the value of the start time, right, we bump that up to the next 500 milliseconds later, basically, um, you know, this probably is going to be true. So nothing happens until we wait for 100 milliseconds. And when it hits that 100 milliseconds, we'll increment, reset the start time again, right, to the last value, and this just keeps on going. So as long as we hold it down, every 100 milliseconds, this will be true, we'll increment, Reset that so we get another hundred millisecond count up and we just keep on going. Eventually the person takes their finger off, okay? Prior button goes to zero and then everything is reset, okay? So there's your basic idea. Uh, for a decrement, it's very simple. It's very similar, except um, obviously you would have a separate button for that. So you'd have a similar bit of code to look at a different uh, possibly a different port, but certainly a different mask there for the combo, if you were using the same port. Um, and again, like I said, you could make a more generic version of this increment, have like an increment decrement function. And if you wanted to do this like high gear thing, you could maybe, one possible way is to uh, count the number of times you've done this. So maybe after, you know, 20 iterations of this, you would say, okay, time to go into high gear. And you would have this uh, separate value that you would set instead of just sending off, you know, one or minus one for your increment decrement. Um, you'd send off five or ten or, you know, whatever was appropriate. But you do have to experiment with these, you know. Um, you don't just do what's easy to code. You want people to look at this and try it and see, well, does this work? Is, you know, is this logical and sensible, you know, human factors, right? Okay.
So there's a nice place to, uh, to start and experiment with. You can check this very easily on your Uno uh, by either uh, over here, maybe toggling an LED or sending something back through the, the uh, serial monitor so you could watch the numbers go up and down as you hold the button. Give it a shot.